<laughs> what appearance? Look just like mine. <laughs> Goes to show you, not all Swedes are natural blondes. <laughs> We're really, really vigilant about um, no talking in the theater, and we have this aggressive stance on it. So our our policy basically is: uh, you talk during the movie. We'll warn you. Uh, we'll warn you sternly. Um, if we have to warn you a second time, that warning will say, if I'm coming back, you are leaving. There's no, there's no third warning. And if I need to bring the police in, I will bring the police. Hi, I'm George Romero, and I have this thing. When a movie's playing and people talk or make noise, I kill them. And the worst thing is they come back to life. So clearly, this is a management uh, team that doesn't really worry about delicate sensibilities or, or offending anyone. Their, their chief and primary goal is to make sure that the movie experience is not sullied by what unfortunately has been bred by the, the multiplex community, which is just, you go to a movie, you talk, you, it's, it's almost like the movies are secondary, but at the Draft House, that's, the movies are the only thing that matters. The Alamo Draft House is a totally unique and distinctive place and, and beloved in the hearts of the Austin community. It's a very interactive kind of cinema where there are sing-alongs and there are, you know, things you can tweet messages onto the screen. Maggie, this is Jillian. Now, meet their new nanny, Jillian. Hello, Maggie. Our other daughter is Maggie. She exists only in the mind of my wife. My daughter's in there. Are you crazy? Don't forget to eat Maggie's lunch. Where's Maggie? She, she's right here. I knew she was on my lap. You just didn't see her. Maggie's lost. She didn't ride with Julie. I think because we do so much alternative programming, there's something happening every night of the week, and there are people that come every night of the week. <laughs> When you do a movie like Twilight and you're making fun of it the way that Master Pancake does, it's, it's, it's a very interesting vibe in the theater because you're going to get a mix of people that are closet fans of Twilight but don't mind getting it, you know, having it poked fun at. And, but there's going to be a large segment of actual legit Twilight fans that probably deep down inside are going to have a little bit of awkwardness of realizing how bad the movie actually is. Man, don't, don't, don't click on it. Don't click on it. Give it. <laughs> It is an amazing job, and I'm incredibly fortunate that I was at the Alamo when I was, and that I had the opportunities to uh, to grow with the company and to sit down with Tim and have a couple of beers, and then be like, "Well, what if we brought Robosaurus to the theater before Transformers and had him breathe fire on cars?" <laughs> So we are, we are in the men's locker room, prepping up in the back with Tim Lee. I've watched a lot of Michelle Rodriguez uh, paparazzi videos on YouTube, <laughs> and um, I know that she has a lightning quick temper. We are, we are here in the uh, ladies' locker room tonight for Fantastic Debates with Michelle Rodriguez, and I hear you- Tim Lee is gonna get his ass whooped! Uh, I um, was really frightened that I was gonna be debating her and pretty much insulting her, and I was actually gonna get her really mad and I was gonna get really hurt. <laughs> wow. Being debated is 
Avatar, deser actually official name, James Cameron's Avatar, deserved to win the Oscar for Best Picture. I don't think that's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm here because I want to kick your ass. Uh, before, before Tim got in the ring with Michelle Rodriguez for uh, the Fantastic Fest debates last year at Fantastic Fest, I actually, I have him on camera saying that the Alamo is all mine if she doesn't come out of that ring. And I was like, sweet. <laughs> I, I landed the very first punch. Um, so I actually connected with uh, Michelle on the side of her face. And then when I did that, I think it was a little bit of a mistake because I could see it, like her eyes went completely, she they didn't literally go red, but I could see the change in her attitude and she did that kind of like twist her neck and then she got serious and popped me so hard in the face that I, it took like two weeks for my neck to stop having a huge kink in it. Like, clear that movie the, the movie theater experience is never going to die because it's not about how big the screen is, how loud the sound is, how 3D the picture is, but uh, it's about coming together with a group of people. A lot of our programming is feel-good programming. We'll, we'll still show um, a lot of documentaries that aren't going to make you feel good leaving the theater. We'll show a wide spectrum of new release movies, but I think the things that hit the most for us is to um, really just love the best of popcorn, if you will. You know, a really entertaining time at the movies and just have a good time. It's, like, it's what I like to do. I like to, I like to be happy. I like to have great experiences that leave me supercharged. And you tend to program where you're passionate. And um, that's, that's where almost all of my team is passionate. When movies are your religion, the Alamo Draft House is a cathedral it's the Holy Land, it's, it's, uh, it is an altar upon which we worship movies. Um, so yeah, I would, I would definitely agree that there is a religious aspect to it uh, that may be a little bit sacrilegious, but honestly, it has that kind of a feel. I mean, it's, it's something that I used to travel long distances for, and now it's, it's something that I've uprooted my life and moved closer to it just so that I can kind of uh, bask in it and then be a part of it. 